Alonzo Perry is uh, with us this morning. Alonzo, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. How you doing? Alonzo is uh, the president of the Berkeley County Republican Club, also is on the discipline committee appointed by Board of Education member Melissa Power. We were just discussing discipline from a comment one of our listeners made in the Facebook section. I'm not sure if you happen to catch it or not, Alonzo, but in this particular case, it was about a student who was stabbed by another student at the end of the day. Nothing really happened. Uh, it was stabbed with a pencil, I should add. Uh, nothing happened to the student, basically, according to the story that was related on our, our Facebook page. Jackie Long chipped in and said that sometimes it's not in the local hands. It can be at the State Board of Education level mm -hmm. because if you get too many disciplines out of your school, that can create other issues as well. So as a member of the discipline committee, what type of things are you considering right now? How many members are there on the discipline committee and, and what is it you're going to try to accomplish? So uh, I would say altogether, I want to say there's roughly uh, 12 to 14 people, and we had actually broke up into groups. So um, there's a group that's for like elementary, intermediate. Can I can I, I interrupt? Is this is this a statewide discipline committee or just for the county? This is Berkeley? for the county. So uh, does every county have a discipline committee? Uh, they sh well, I actually don't know the question of that. Um, uh, to be honest. All I know okay, is that uh, the Board of Education member, Melissa Power, she appointed me to join this committee, okay. and it's filled with different administrators and people. Uh, I wish I could get in the weeds on it. I just That's okay. That's that. okay. Go ahead. So, um, yeah, there's about 12 to 14 members of us, uh, and our goal was to essentially um, – find a way to implement the new house legislation that came in it's 2890 which does like mandated reporting for uh different types of discipline uh is related issues and uh, also to find a way to meet with policy 4373 which is the state board's discipline policy and then find a way for us to kind of integrate it and figure out ways to present to the board the board of education um, what our findings are as the committee what is the state board's discipline policy? So they have uh, more, I guess, itemized uh, behavioral like matrix matrices where they're like, you know, uh, th this is what you can, you know, prescribe discipline for. This is how you uh, can implement it in your school system. You know, and it's it's more of the the wide um, when it comes like the more horizontal approach in terms of. Um, the actual issues at hand that are going on that you can uh, prescribe a discipline policy for, and it's a long, it's a long policy. the The state board has, you know, a, a whole book on its own, but we really focused on um, really figuring out how Berkeley County or how we should print to, present to the board uh, some things to basically implement uh, these two kind of, uh, I guess, father instruments, um, if, for lack of better words. Um, I get frustrated with with this issue because everybody acknowledges that it's that it's a problem, and we discuss the sources of the problem. We discuss the power sense of powerlessness that teachers have, and by extension, that administrators have. It's like it, it, everybody talks about the problem, and now we're going to collect data on the problem. It just seems to me that there's very little effort spent toward solving the problem, and that is that kids. I love them. I have them. They're they're great, but they're little monsters that that need to be disciplined <laughs> and and kept in line, right? I mean, it's, it's are, are, just nobody. Some, can we say some children are some children? Some children. Some <laughs> children. We not call all not, children little monsters. Not mine. But, left to left to be feral. Yeah, they would, right? I mean, it, it's is this so Lord this, of the Flies. Is Piggy coming out with his glasses or something? What's going on? Yeah, here? right. I mean, so I'm just saying that the the issue is is discipline in the old-fashioned form I'm not talking corporal punishment necessarily but that actions have consequences if you if you don't if you don't study and you don't pass the test you get an F if you get too many F's you don't move on and and I don't know it, it just seems to me that we're we're there's a lot of churn but not a lot of discussion on the solutions well first I want to say you know I'm uh, extremely like impressed with a lot of the administrators and the people that were working uh, in this discipline committee because you know we all had a vested interest in seeing kids in Berkeley County do well and try to figure out um, what we need to do to basically um, 
actually have something that that is useful right to really get into the interior of the issue uh so we talked about you know the specifics in terms of uh, like what is going on in the classroom what is the teacher facing what is happening in that line from the teacher to the administrator once that student has to you know uh go and get reprimanded um, is there something effective going on in the actual reporting system and then uh, what can we present to the board to try to uh, you know in a non-intrusive way find a, a remedy and what we found um, to to be the most I guess our guiding light was uh, to one make sure that um, well because reporting is mandated now we needed to find in some way uh, to look at what is being reported, how is things going into the Weavis system, and is it ever being checked on again once a teacher goes in there and writes, or is it just sitting somewhere cosmically? So um, we tried to figure out something that we could do to have that uh, isolated. Another thing that we thought was going to be effective was to increase the uh, behavior matrix that already exists. So there's certain things that if a kid, you know, um, takes upon a certain action, then there's already a recourse kind of on this, you know, like graph of, you know, okay, they do this, then here's the punishment. Um, we also look to increase um, the, the actual effectiveness of the punishments because a lot of the, the things that were happening in discipline weren't being effective. There were some things that were in a gray area almost that you never leave uh, an in-school suspension or a lunch detention. And when you have issues where a student goes to lunch detention or to uh, in-school suspension, you almost never contact the parents. Now, what for, is lunch detention? So it's like during their lunch period, instead of, you know, sitting amongst their peers kind of in the uh, cafeteria area, then they're going to be in an area with, you know, an administrator or a teacher um, sitting there and, and kind of um, holding them over. And you can also get lunch attention for things like, you know, being late for class too many times or uh, just a frequent, you know, behavior. But that's what we added was uh, a, a pattern of misconduct can actually be a suspendable offense. So what we were having or what we were hearing from um, kind of the classroom is more or less that, you know, you would have a kid that's not doing anything that meets a behavior matrix issue, right, that's disruptive, still causing an issue, and the discipline that was allocated was never beyond uh, the, you know, in school or the lunch detention, and even le in school detention is, you know, an issue because of sometimes the actual time periods in which the kid gets picked up, you know, maybe it's, you know, they, they have to do it only in, in the mornings or, you know, like it, it, it was just creating a, a, a place where they can get away with anything and the punishment will never fit the crime. So by, uh, and this is something that we're still offering. So the school board can say that this is not going to happen. This is not what we're, um, we, we don't find this to be an effective approach and then they can in implement what they would like. But this is just what was in finding um, with our committee. And I just want to uh, point that out. Matt Harvey. Um, is, is this discipline committee, is this, how long has this been around? So uh, this is my first time okay. being on it. And I don't know if this is something that is done every time there's legislation made or uh, if there's another period that, that these people um, – exist if that makes sense um, in this particular group but there are other groups too which was what I found to be interesting like the people that check the actual um, like weave system and, and kind of streamline what's going on there's a, another council and their name just escapes me uh, at the moment I apologize that's but. okay so the just to be clear the state board of education's role is to kind of create the, the parameters and the guidelines and mm -hmm. then it's up to the local boards to implement yes yes can the local boards not figure it out themselves or no i don't think that that's what it is i think it's just this is the layers of bureaucracy that we see in, well, in you know <laughs> yes yeah, because i was trying system. to figure out why do we have I mean, a state board of education there's there's we have even, 55 boards of education well there's even think about this we have you know also the federal government that has their own regulatory regime that kind of has certain guidelines in there there's certain provisions of things that we can't do you know in the special ed realm or in uh even our committee simply because there's like you know just layers where you have to see are we in compliance with this level this level this level and then finally you know 
applying it. You know, you, we're putting our, our teachers and administrators in kind of a, a, a kerfuffle, a little, you know, tough spot. And I thought that that was fascinating, too, just uh, being with, you know, the people there. I had a lot of questions, and it was like, you know, it, it would take time for us to kind of reference, and then we'll be like, okay, well, when we convene, we'll send you the data on this, or the next time we're, we're together, we'll, we'll do this. And this has been a couple-week uh, period that we've done this. It's been, I want to say, um, probably about six weeks since we've started. I- I got. I got to tell you, I've never heard of a discipline committee, and you know, that, <laughs> that's <laughs> and as the prosecuting attorney. I mean, we work really closely with the school, and in fact, statutorily, I'm the board of education's attorney in Jefferson County. In Jefferson County, yeah. correct. But you know, our our juvenile prosecutors are are certainly um, we. You know, we catch our office catches what you know, when kids have problems that go beyond the classroom. You know, we we ultimately have to deal with them mm-hmm. in, in corrigibility petitions, or if they stab someone, that's not a a funny stabbing like. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah, so those fun stabbing. Yeah, those fun. Sta- <laughs> no, no, like like a serious or yeah. a disciplinary problem, and I've never heard of a, a discipline committee. So it's it's kind of like from what I understand. Uh, you know, these are the, the, the kind of steps that they take when you ask your superintendent to, like, you know, form certain committees. And there are committees that run, you know, a number of issues and different uh, topics that, you know, they get parents involved, they get outside people involved to be able to uh, deal with the problem. And I think that the formation of the discipline committee was uh, most likely from uh, that kind of conception. Uh, as for, you know, there, it probably would have helped to have an attorney, you know, on uh, the discipline committee here in Berkeley. And I'm sure if Jefferson even has a, 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 a committee that's like ours, then uh, I would advise that because it's it's there's a lot well, of you look, <laughs> legal. Look, you can't you can't ask the, the, the average attorney out there to serve on that board mm-hmm. because education law is so specialized. There's just a handful of specialists across the state that, really? that it, it's it's extremely complicated and i think we're kind of getting down to what the problem is is we it's just so difficult for administrators and teachers to do their daggone jobs mm-hmm. that's a very good way of summarizing that alonzo the work that you're doing and if i missed this earlier my apologies but the work that you're doing does it include discipline for special education students as well or is that an entirely different category so this is something that we, when we talked about it, we were only focusing on um, non-special education non-special students education. because that is another complication. I got a text from somebody who was in the Berkeley County school system for many, many years uh, working with special education students, was attacked, filed an incident report, and it goes nowhere because that's just the deal, right? And that shouldn't mm-hmm. be what the deal is. You don't go to work and in a school or on a bus or in a cafeteria and accept <laughs> violence against you because that's just the deal. Yeah, and and you got to think we didn't we didn't do anything to uh, that's that's like makes like mandatory you know sentencing for kids or anything like that. Like I don't want it to sound you know um, beyond what it is. I it, think you should build it, your campaign all, for your next yeah. office. Somewhere. <laughs> all this does is it provides the tools that that we feel the teachers feel that they don't have mm-hmm. to be able to you know confidently and comfortably you know send a kid out i mean how many times do you think a teacher actually pulls up the behavior matrix in the middle of you know a disruptive student or they're like get out of here and then afterwards now they're going to have to uh start recording every instance of uh this actual occurrence and that's that's what the uh, state legislation is uh promoting so what we tried to do was basically add that um pattern of misconduct so that you know uh, there's also another tool that we're adding to their belt to say hey um you know i have a student that's not doing anything that's you know a suspendable offense but i mean this is just daily you know constant non-stop uh just behavioral issues that are causing an environment not conducive to learning for the rest of the kids in the classroom i can't comfortably do my job and therefore the entire room suffers for it well you know beforehand there was nothing there so uh, hopefully the uh, berkeley county school board will look at that if nothing else and say um, you know to add this how much of an issue is this in berkeley county schools do you have a count on how many incidents there were that were considered to be something that required discipline in the last school year yes we did get uh graphs on you know um different breakdowns of uh the 
types of behavior that are going on, uh, how many incidents have been reported. But I'll be honest, uh, just the, the data collection, I think, I don't, I'm not sure how comfortable I was looking over those numbers just simply because, you know, there wasn't like a mandated reporting beforehand. And mm -hmm. I didn't know if it was reflective of um, what was uh, going on in, in actuality. And I mean, I, I think the Board of Education, they probably can speak to that a little more and may uh, critique me for saying that. But I, I just there, there was something uh, about the data sets that I wish it was broke down, you know, in different ways. Like it was broken down by, uh, you know, race or socioeconomic status. Uh, I want to know, you know, the school systems, like what's uh, for secondary, um, you know, are there more behavior issues at Musselman than at Martinsburg, Martinsburg to Hedgesville, Hedgesville mm -hmm. to Spring Mills, you know, that, that wasn't provided. So we were looking, you know, countywide, but uh, I just wanted to, to have, a, a, a clearer picture and hopefully with the mandated reporting the incident count will actually be um, better tallied and and um, that's just a, a personal opinion I want to put that up so let's take a step back it's easy to we, we start with the the observation that the West Virginia schools do not perform well we're certainly down at the bottom of, of the list of states and then we we take a step back from that, we talk about these disciplinary issues, and it's easy to draw the conclusion, you know, correlation and causality are different things, right? Mm -hmm. So it's easy to say because of, of low pay and because of disciplinary problems, that's why our school numbers are bad. Have you had an opportunity to look at the nearby counties, nearby states? I mean, whether it's Loudoun County or, or Washington County or just na nationwide, is this a nationwide problem in terms of discipline or do you, do you know? So the information we got was very localized. Um, it was it was tailored for Berkeley. There wasn't really representation from uh, other p parts of the state. But I think it may just be, you know, uh, just the sheer th – there's really not a county like Berkeley in West Virginia. And then if we go look, you know, in other states, God only knows what policies are being, you know, put in there or, or uh, followed in the sense of um, what their structures uh, promote. So uh, I don't know if, if, if it would be much help. Um, again, our job was to, to take kind of a, a wide uh, approach of, you know, um, not specifically tailoring anything to um, each of the, you know, individualized schools or, or um, looking at a particular behavior, right, and saying that there's a, a remedy for that one type of behavior, but more saying, let's look at the whole picture. What can we put in here to uh, increase, you know, uh, the the I guess, or decrease the amount of actual uh, disruptive behavior in the school and, and give, you know, teachers and administrators a, a, a strong feeling that, you know, they can execute a, a, a discipline policy without, you know, any repercussion. And I know that there's, you know, obviously other things that they have to worry about. There's funding, there's um, different things, but that's for the board to consider um, from what we found to be probably the best course of action. So you indicated at the beginning that the disciplinary committee that, of which you're part is gathering data that's driven by legislation that was re recently passed. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that all 55 counties in West Virginia are gathering similar data through similar means? So I don't know how the data collection works for each of the 55 counties. Um, I think that that may be something that's uh, collected and brought to their particular school board. Um, you know, I, I look at it kind of like the school board gets a lot of this information um, or, or even chooses to study it. That's part of their discretion. Um, there's not a, a, a wide swath of things that are within their means, but for uh, the assembly of this kind of committee to go over or implementation of the state statutes, um, that's purely up to their discretion and however those counties want to deal with it um, is, is upon them. Both Jackie Long and Damon Wright from the Board of Education say there is an attorney appointed to the Discipline Committee, uh, Lonzo. He may have been in the, the, the younger groups, unless I just didn't know he was an attorney. Uh, so we, we, we split off. Like Once we, we convened, we were doing it like over um, teams, and we were you know talking to each other. And, and once we basically got the, the base of ideas, we read, a, we read a couple case studies as well. There was like a Supreme Court 
or West Virginia Supreme Court decision that, you know, we had uh, gone over that was related to discipline. And once we had gotten loaded, front loaded with all the information that we possibly could, then we went and kind of said, uh, what what do we feel our expertise is? You know, what do we feel comfortable uh, going into? And I thought I've been, you know, probably the closest to secondary education than mm-hmm. anybody in the committee. So I was like, let me do that one. Um, and some other people broke off and went with intermediate and elementary. I, I think there needs to be a discipline committee for the parents. Mm. We don't have bad kids. We have bad parents that can you know, let their kids run amok at school, get mm. into all kinds of trouble, cause problems for the other students and the teachers, and there's there's nothing that affects them. Yeah. I mean, it would be nice if there was some sort of accountability uh, to – make them suffer some sort of inconvenience at the very least that they have to come in uh, and meet with a counselor or something to address why there are these problems going on because clearly a a child's acting out because more than likely something is happening at home. Well, if they're acting out and they're, they're, you know, confined only to the in-school suspension or the lunch detention, you know, then you don't even, you don't even get the parent involved. I think personally, we can't control every single, you know, different scenario or event or parent. It's, it's, you know, once a kid is suspended for just, I mean, a, a multitude of bad behaviors that, you know, don't seem to be remedied by, uh, the, uh, conditional approaches or, uh, I think that, you know, it may get that parent involved when their kid is being sent home. And they're like, why are you why are you at the house all the time? Don't you have school? You know, I, I mean, a lot of these parents are able to just send their kids to school. And then they, they don't, they're never even, uh, you know, I don't want to say bothered. They but abdicate never, their responsibility yeah, as parents to the yeah, school. Yeah, they're once... Exactly. They they once they've abdicated, you know, the responsibility and their kid, you know, goes in there, there's almost never a, a, a reproach to them in any kind of way. So maybe um, by having that 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 measure in there that says, you know, OK, a pattern of misconduct is going to send you home. Maybe then when their kid's home, then they'll realize that there's a problem that needs to be addressed and maybe they want to get involved. We are just about out of time. Uh, Alonzo, when do you meet in regards to the discipline committee and how often? So it was uh, about every Thursday. Um, I want to say we've changed times. It was, I think the last, the most recent time was uh, the 3 p.m. or so. But I, I think most of the work that we've been able to do is complete. Um, I actually missed the last uh, little convening of it, but um, I still have my email available for if there's any uh, type of meeting or group or if. Um, we're ready to present. I don't know who's going to be the presenter for it, but uh, I'm really proud of the work that those guys were able to do, and I was really happy to be a part of this. When do you anticipate being able to present your final ideas? Um, I actually I don't know that. Is it a year off, six months? Some... It it should be roughly soon. So you got to think also. Policy forty three seventy three is also being um, rewritten. Um, they're they're making amendments to it, and so once you know the state actually finishes amending it they convened sometime this month as well um, may have already and uh, delegate hornby might have more information on that but um th- once that is completed then they'll be able to actually um you know put this in stone very good oh and, and on the way out the door do you want to plug the uh dinner that uh mm-hmm, you talked mm-hmm. about for a moment yesterday 60 yeah. seconds we can do a full program on it later but uh, go ahead and take 60 seconds that's awesome so um on september 6th at 16th at Heritage Hall, uh, the Berkeley County Republicans C- Club and the Berkeley County Republican Executive Committee are going to be hosting the Eisenhower Dinner. We have Jack Posobiec, we have Alex Stein, we have Ashley St. Clair, and they're all going to be speaking to our clubs. There's anticipated to be about 400 people that are going to be at this event. So hurry up, buy your tickets. We may raise the price of the tickets a week before the actual event is going to take place. So I would hurry up and get them now. Where do you get them? So you can buy them from berkeleycountygop.com. Alonzo, thank you. No, thank you, Rob.